So it's spring and the flowers are blooming. So I thought what better way to start spring off with a top 20 floral fragrances video. We're going to count down the 20 fragrances coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Let's get right to it. I love flowers. But floral fragrances were a bit challenging for me early on in my journey for fragrances. Now I've always loved fragrances, smelling them, and I've always loved flowers and smelling flowers. But wearing the floral fragrances were a bit challenging, but I've been doing this now for six, seven years and really heavily into fragrances for about 10 years. And I love floral fragrances now, I absolutely love them. Now this video might appeal to women more than men, but guys, please, Embrace floral fragrances because you're going to love them once you really get into them. Now, also, I want to mention we're not going to have lots of rose here. We're not going to have lots of iris, violet. Other than that, all other flowers are game. We've got a lot of tuberose, jasmine, gardenia, lilac, and a few other uh, floral fragrances. But uh, all beautiful floral fragrances. I also want to mention this is my third and last or final spring themed video. So we did the top 20 spring fragrances video. We did the top 20 green fragrances for spring video. And now this is the top 20 floral fragrances for spring video. So let's get started. It's a fragrance I reviewed about two years ago from a brand called Jeroboam. This is Hoto, this one right here. Now I've spoken about Jeroboam quite frequently on this channel. And it's a offspring brand from the folks that own Jovoy. And what you saw the, the video I did recently, Top 5 Jovoy Fragrances. So this is their same, it's not the same brand, but it's owned by the same people. So it's a uh, fragrance brand that has fragrances in 30 ml extrait de parfum concentration. And this one, Hokto, is a uh, tuberose dominant fragrance, which also includes musk, pineapple, bergamot, pink pepper or spices and rose. Now this one to me is so gorgeous. It's beautiful and very clean. One of the cleanest tuberose fragrances, almost like laundry clean. And I think what's causing that is the fact that there's musk in here. So it's like a clean white musk. And then there's also pineapple. So it's got little hints and touches of, of fruitiness from the pineapple. But to me, this is mostly tuberose and musk. Check it out, beautiful spring fragrance and a very long-lasting extrait de parfum concentration. So this is Hoto by Jeroboam, and that's at number uh, 20. So at number 19, we're going to the house of Jacques Pat, and we have Curacao Bay, this one right here. So this is a white floral fragrance with frangipani. Beautiful, beautiful flower. Absolutely love the way it smells. As a kid, I used to have one near me, and uh, oh my god, they, they smell beautiful and very creamy white. But here, what they've done is, as you can see the color, it's blue and they've added aquatic touches to it. So it's frangipani, uh, aquatic notes, musk, pedigran, lemon, tangerine. Uh, there's also a black currant uh, note or, or like a blackberry note. I think it's cassis. So it's currant or cassis. There's green notes, woody notes, ambergris, and uh, orange. So it is a very, very beautiful white flower style fragrance, but it's all aquatic. So and the aquatic touches are very, very tolerable for me, at least. I've been mentioning, I've been kind of slowly getting into aquatics. Still, some are over the top with like extra big fat dose of calone in the notes, which I can't tolerate. But here is just gorgeous. So if you don't know this one, you probably have heard of green water from Jacques Pat. But this is Cura Curacao Bay from Jacques Pat at number uh, 19. Next up, we're going to the house of La Parfumerie Moderne. And this is Desarmant, this one right here. Now this is all about lilac. So if you like lilac as a note, you're gonna like this one. But this one is lilac at the top. Well, it's actually, they don't have a note breakdown with top and heart and uh, base notes, but it's lots of uh, lilac with oak moss, leather, and vanilla. So the most dominant notes I pick up here are lilac with oak moss, and then I also get some leather. So it could be a little potent as it's drying down because the lilac kind of starts Fading, but still, the lilac is the biggest note here. That's why you can see the, the bottle is all purple uh, because that's the color of lilac, the flower. And I love the way lilacs smell. When they're blooming, they smell just gorgeous. I love to pick them and put them in a vase in the house and the, the fragrance just uh, 
uh, deodorizes a room and things like that. But here, it is a sort of classic, what they've done with the oak moss and the leather. So it has classic touches with that gorgeous and beautiful uh, lilac note. So check it out, this is Desarmont, and that's at number uh, 18. So we're going to the house of Clive Christian for number 17, and this is C for women. But this is also pretty um, easy to wear for men. And it's all about tuberose, jasmine, marigold. There's a boozy rum note, there's violet, uh, and of course tonka bean, amber, sandalwood, and a lot of other floral notes in here. But as I said, I'm not including violet, but there's violet here, and there's also rose, but those are not the dominant notes. This is all about tuberose, jasmine, and marigold. And it does have that boozy touch with the uh, rum note in here, but really, really gorgeous. Um, this is one of the older bottles. I think they've been doing some changes at Clive Christian, so I'm not even sure if this one still exists. It would be a bummer if it doesn't, but if you have a bottle, do, do uh, get it because it's so gorgeous. Really, really lovely. This is Sea for Woman by Clive Christian, and that's at number 17. At number 16, we're going to the house of Dior, and this is Dior Privé Grand Ball. This one right here basically stands for the big grand ball, ballroom, things like that. But this is all about jasmine, neroli, ylang ylang, musk, sandalwood, and uh, bergamot. Truly beautiful fragrance. The Dior Privé line is just gorgeous, and this is one of their more beautiful floral fragrances, but you've got to love jasmine. If you don't love jasmine, this might, might be a turnoff for you. And the jasmine in here is not the dirty kind. Sometimes jasmine can come off dirty, slightly fecal. Here, it's really, really beautiful. Really beautiful. Like I, I, I see like weddings with this fragrance. I don't know if it's because of the name Grand Ball, but I just picture weddings. Like a, a man and a, a couple, like a husband and wife that are just getting married can totally wear this one and enjoy their wedding. So Grand Ball by Dior Privé Collection is at number 16. So at number 15 is a fragrance that I recently reviewed with Adalia, a guest of mine here on this channel. It's again from Dior Privé Collection. This is New Look 1947. So this one is beautiful. It's, it's, a, it's lots of white flowers. So the dominant note is um, tuberose. Then you have ylang ylang. You also have vanilla. Then you have iris and uh, rose and peony and jasmine. But the biggest note here is the um, uh, Next to the jasmine, next to the tuberose, it's a benzoin. So it has a very warm touch to it. And that's why it kind of gives off a very unisex vibe, even though this is kind of targeted to, to uh, women, if that makes sense. So if you like resins like benzoin with flowers, this is the one you gotta try. This is just gorgeous. New Look 1947 at number 15. Next, we're going to the house of Louis Vuitton, and this is Turbulence, is this one right here. So this is all about tuberose again, but it's also got a big dose of jasmine. So it's tuberose, leather, and jasmine, and it also has magnolia. To me, it smells like uh, the best of uh, jasmine and tuberose combined with leather. Then you can also pick up some of that uh, mag uh, magnolia in here, and I absolutely love magnolia fragrances. I want to find like true magnolia fragrances, but you can pick that up here. But it's all about the leather, the tuberose, and that jasmine. It's, like, it's funny, once I put my nose on it, it becomes more uh, tuberose, and sometimes I put my nose on it, it becomes more, more jasmine. Same with my, on my skin. The leather does pop through a little bit, but it's all about those two flowers. It's gorgeous. If you don't know Turbulences, uh, definitely check it out. This is Turbulences from Louis Vuitton at number 14. Next up, we're going to the house of Giovanna Antonelli, which we, I did a video with uh, recently with a guest of mine, uh, Sarah. We did first impressions of three of the fragrances, and the one I put on this list is uh, called 611 Extremo, this one right here, and this is all about jasmine, tuberose, and then we have benzoin again, so it does sweeten things up a bit. And it also has a pretty big pear note. You can pick up lots of pear in here, even on the skin, and it has bergamot, some licorice or anise, vanilla and rhubarb. A truly gorgeous scent if you love white flowers with like warm touches like the benzoin resin, uh, this is the one for you. But the pear is pretty big here. It is definitely there and it does come off on the skin too. So check it out. This is 611 Extremo by Giovanna Antonelli at number 13. All right, next up we're going to the house of Nila Vermeer Creations and this is Pichola, this one right here. This one is a truly gorgeous, beautiful fragrance. It's all white flowers. You've got noroli, you've got tuberose, you've got magnolia, you've got orange blossom, jasmine, 
And then further on down the list, you've got ylang ylang, rose, saffron. So it's lots of uh, floral notes, but a truly gorgeous scent. And now this one actually kind of also hints at Bombay Bling a little bit to me. A little bit, not too much. And it's also a very happy floral fragrance. This is probably like the ultimate spring fragrance uh, to wear because of all those white flowers in it. Of course, it also includes the, uh, the uh, rose. But the rose is not as dominant. There's also some woody notes in here, some spicy notes as well, and it does include that benzoin resin as well. So check it out, Pishola from Nila Vermeer Creations, and that's at number 12. Next up, we're going to the house of Eric Buderbau, or EB Florals, and this is Melrose Freesia. Now, I did a first impressions video of six Eric Buderbau fragrances, and this is one of my favorites out of um, all of the, the ones, and then there's another one on this list from this house as well. But this is Melrose Freesia, and I absolutely love Freesia. Freesias are just the most beautiful fragrance, fragrances, uh, or actually not fragrances actually, just flow flowers to smell. Buy them from like the store, bring them uh, and then put them in a vase and they just smell. You just keep going back to them and smelling them. And here it's very, very close to that. It smells very close. But you've got a, a crisp and a almost crunchy, crispy green apple note, a little boozy touch from rum, and then you've got some jasmine, you've got also iris and tiar uh, notes in here. And then it, it dries down to a bit of uh, cashmere and muscone and toffee notes. So there's a little bit of like a gourmand touch to it, but truly a gorgeous scent. If you don't know it, do check it out. This is Melrose Freesia from Eric Buderbau florals or EB florals fragrances and that's at number 11 and speaking of EB florals at number 10 it is HRH Peony another one that's absolutely truly gorgeous and then also it has gourmand touches again so it's got uh, bergamot and violet at the top black peony in the heart with stargazer lily and I love peonies absolutely love them and also love lilies and then in the dry down it becomes like patchouli praline slightly gourmand going almost in, in the direction of things like uh, Mugler, but not, not, not quite there because it doesn't have a lot of uh, gourmand touches. But this is absolutely a truly beautiful fragrance. If you don't know HRH Peony, do check it out. It is, smells delicious, beautiful flowers. And that's at number 10. Next up at number nine, we're going to the house of Parfum de Marly and this is Delina, this one right here. Now I did a review of this one and really fell in love with it. It is floral. It is pink. Uh, I absolutely do not like the color pink personally, but the smell is just gorgeous. It's roses, it's peony, it's rhubarb, lychee fruit, musk, cashmere, vanilla, fl white floral notes. You've also got bergamot and uh, vetiver, nutmeg, and cedar. But it's so beautiful in the heat. This one actually is like a it does have like great performance, but it's also a fresh sheaf that makes sense. So you can wear it in the heat and overspray it and just smell gorgeous. So check it out, Delina, and that's uh, at number nine from the house of uh, Parfum de Marly. Next up, we're going to the house of Louis Vuitton again, and this is Apogee, this one right here. Now I speak about this one a lot. It's a very, very beautiful white flower, freshy. Um, so it's got Lily of the Valley, Magnolia, Musk, Jasmine, uh, Gayak wood, uh, sandalwood, uh, rose, orange, and uh, tangerine. Uh, man, it's perfect in the heat. Absolutely perfect. And uh, it makes wearing flowers very easy, if that makes sense. So if you have a challenging time wearing flowers as a man, I'm sure women don't have any problems with it. But as a man, if you do, this is one to try. It also has this like very underlying watery type um, quality to it, almost aquatic, but not necessarily seawater, more like regular drinking water. So do check it out, Apogee at number eight. And speaking of Apogee, and I mentioned this in the video I did with Dahlia about Diorissimo, Diorescence, Diorama, and Diorella. This one right here, Diorissimo, is similar to Apogee. Both Louis Vuitton and uh, Dior are under the Louis Vuitton Moet and Hennessy Corporation. So I think this, this one was inspired by this. this this came way before this one. There's similarities, but I find this one to be a little more potent and a lot more concentrated with notes. Even though this is EDT, the toilette, and this is EDP, the parfum, I still find this one a lot better to wear, but it's also a lot more concentrated smelling, even though it's an EDT. It doesn't make sense to me, but anyway, that's just perfume technicalities. So this is also Lily of the Valley, Jasmine, and Ylang Ylang. So it's white flowers, but it comes off very citrusy. I don't see any citrus notes listed. 
very, very refreshing and really, really perfect to wear in high, hot, uh, high temperatures, hot heat, humid heat, all that good stuff. So this is another one that you can try if you are uh, like difficult time with or challenged with uh, white flowers. These two perfectly. This one's easier because it has that watery touch to it. But this one's the next one. So this is Diorissimo, and that's at number uh, seven. We're going to the house of um, Tower Perfumes next, and this is Noontide Petals. So this one is the odd man out here. It's a floral for me, but it's more about aldehydes than it's lots of um, lots of ylang ylang and citrus notes of bergamot. Then you also have some resins and ambery type notes, woody notes, and uh, there's also tuberose here. So there are flowers. There's also rose and iris and patchouli, sandalwood, but truly a gorgeous scent. This is very, very underrated. It does have the uh, Tower Perfumes Towerot DNA in here. You can pick it up for sure, but it's a unique, unique fragrance. So um, I recommend this one. This one might be some of the most potent ones out of here for spring. So uh, use with caution or spray less, but man, it's such a good fragrance. Noontide Petals from Tower Perfumes at number six. At number five, we're going to the house of Van Cleef and Arpels, and this is Gardenia Petal. So my mom and dad were gardenia freak, freaks. My dad planted gardenias. They cultivated all that good stuff. And they picked them and put them in the house and, and the house smelled like gardenias. And they both loved gardenias. My mom still does. My dad's no longer around. And as a son of theirs, I absolutely love the way gardenias smell. And this is probably some of the best gardenia fragrance that I've ever put my nose on. Just truly a gorgeous scent. So it's got gardenias, it's got like cherry blossom, it's got green notes, jasmine, ylang ylang, and citruses. But man, it smells so beautiful. Like it smells like you're smelling the gardenia with some other flowers next to it. If you don't know this uh, fragrance, please check it out if you like gardenias because it does really smell like the gardenia petals. Um, it's absolutely, truly beautiful. It's perfect for spring. It's one of the best flowers, and I love smelling gardenias. And here, they've captured the gardenia very, very beautifully. So it's Gardenia Petal by Van Cleef and Arpels, and that's at number five. All right, next up, we're going to the house of Penhaligans, and this is Ostara, a discontinued fragrance, but an absolutely gorgeous fragrance. If you can find a bottle, get it now, because this is one of the best representations of the smell of Narcissus in a flower. And this, I find to be one of the best spring flowers. Absolutely gorgeous. You've got Narcissus, you've got Hyacinth, you've got Green Notes, you've got Beeswax, Ylang Ylang, um, you've got um, Lilac, Vanilla, uh, Hawthorne, uh, just a concoction of floral and ambery and woody notes remaining created by Bertrand du Chaffou. And I fell in, this, uh, in love with this one pretty late, but I am so happy I have my bottle. I bought it like late last year for around $90, but beautiful. So check it out. Ostara from Penhaligans, and that's at number four. Next up, another beautiful floral fragrance, and this is from the house of Amawash, and this is Lilac Love. So this is all about lilac, cacao, vanilla, tonka bean, and gardenia, orris and peony, jasmine, sandalwood, rose, and patchouli. But man, they've made a gourmand out of a floral. But beautiful, but the next one is uh, similar too. Um, it's not quite like a gourmand, but you do pick up the cacao. The cacao comes off dusty, like it's a dusting, a coating of uh, cacao over the lilacs and then uh, lilac flowers. And then you've got the tonka bean and vanilla. So it does have this like gourmand quality to it, but it's a floral. It's just absolutely delicious. This is one of my favorite Amawash fragrances. Hands down, it rocks. And if you like lilacs, if you like gourmand notes, this is going to be it for you. Please do check it out. Lilac Love from Amouage at number three. Another gourmand floral, and here comes one from Mugler's Le Exceptions Collection. This is Wonder Bouquet, this one right here. Now this is uh, absolutely gorgeous. It is like, it was a funky kind of a start. Like I was like, what were they doing with this fragrance? But man, I absolutely love this fragrance. It is absolutely delicious. So we've got orange blossom, jasmine, beeswax, bread, uh, hazelnuts, shisu, then you got uh, tuberose, vanilla, lily of the valley, tangerine, orange, rose, and cashmere. Absolutely beautiful. It smells delicious. It has great longevity. It does come off a, wee a little bit weird at first because I think it's got like a pretty big bread note. So you can smell the bread and that kind of like goes like, um, you, you kind of start thinking like, whoa, what are they doing here with this fragrance? But man, it grew on me so much that I absolutely love it. Wonder Bouquet is absolutely delicious. It's a true Mugler fragrance. 
true floral fragrance. If you don't know it, do check it out. It's perfect for spring too. So this is Wonder Bouquet by Mugler and that's at number two. Last but not least in the top 20 floral fragrances for spring video, fragrance is Carnal Flower. This one from Frederick Mall. So you got to love this one. It's truly a gorgeous tuberose fragrance. And what's unique about this one is the fact that it's tuberose with eucalyptus. Now that's unique. I haven't seen that one before in the a tuberose fragrance, then you've got jasmine, and then you've got the coconut. You'd get a major, major dose of coconut here. And then you have some orange blossom, ylang ylang, cantaloupes, and then finally musk and uh, bergamot. Absolutely gorgeous fragrance, absolutely delicious. Really, really smells wonderful, and absolutely love it. It's, it's, it's very, very unisex. I mean, it's definitely tuberose, but I think guys can totally pull this one off. Do give it a chance. It smells wonderful. It works great in spring and summer, even in fall. Definitely demands the number one spot. So, Carnal Flower from Frederick Mall, number one for the top 20 floral fragrances for spring video. Guys, what are your thoughts about these fragrances? Are you interested in checking these out? As a man, do you like flower or floral fragrances? Do you like to smell floral fragrances or actually wear them? And actually also, do you like to smell flowers? Do you like the way flowers smell? And because you like the flowers, do you like to wear and appreciate floral fragrances? Also let me know if you do currently wear floral fragrances and if you do wear floral fragrances, which are your favorite floral fragrances? Put them down, let's get a conversation started. Also guys, please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye.